Hey everyone, this is a tutorial about transformers. What we're going to do in this tutorial is run through the theory of how a transformer actually works and also run through an implementation of this in PyTorch. More specifically, we're going to use PyTorch Lightning and the goal of this is for you to be able to theoretically understand and intuitively understand how a transformer actually works and to be able to gain some skills in programming in PyTorch, working with natural language data, and we're eventually going to deploy this model as well. So the context of what we're going to be working under is a translation problem. So we're going to use a very simple toy data set. This is more about transformers than engineering with PyTorch or manipulating data, but we're gonna use a, um, a small data set just to train our translation model on. Okay, so the way that we're going to run this is it's going to be a series. Um, there's going to be a bunch of different videos. So ideally there'll be one video um, for one of these chapters or one of these topics, or maybe one video for two of them. Uh, I'll decide based on each one, which I think is most appropriate. Today, we'll just be running through the introduction and I'll probably also release the self-attention video with this today as well. After those two is the multi-head attention and the residual and layer normalization. Now don't worry if you don't understand exactly what these terms mean that's that's the point of this tutorial i'm just giving you an outline of what's to come we'll then look at position wise feed forward networks and together that will build the transformer encoder we'll then move on to the transformer decoder which consists of multi of masked multi-head attention after plugging all the pieces together and building the the decoder in its entirety we'll look at how we can train our transformer and we're actually going to be using a framework called pytorch lightning to do this Finally, we'll look at testing the model and then deploying it so you can get a link which you can share with your friends who will be able to um, you know, use the model on, on whichever language pairs you decide to train this on. Okay, so let's start. What is the story of Transformers? Well, they were released in 2017 by Ashish Vaswani um, and other authors who were at Google at the time. Now, it was originally designed for NLP, more specifically translation, however, its power was very quickly recognized and now the transformer underpins most state-of-the-art machine learning algorithms in both NLP, in computer, in computer vision, in signal processing, and it's making an emergence in RL as well. It's a non-recurrent model, um, which, which is very different from how RNNs actually work. And the advantage of this is it allows for you to parallelize some of the operations within it. And it's purely based on attention. There's no inductive bias apart from the kind of data which you're inputting. Now, holistically, how it works, uh, actually, before I run into this, I want to provide some high level overview. Um, I won't dive into what these are doing. That's, that's the point of this tutorial series. But under the context of translation, we're working with an encoder decoder architecture. Let me just uh, use my pen here. This might be a bit easier for me to, to control. Okay, so I, I understand it's quite small. Um, so we have here the encoder, and here we have the, the decoder. Let's see if I can uh, change this pointer, uh, laser pointer, there we go. Okay, yeah, so we have the encoder and then the decoder. Okay, we have n amounts of encoder, so let's say six, six layers of in the encoder. The output of one layer gets sent to the next layer. Okay, uh, I think I can draw with this, just give me a second. Uh, pen, let's see if this works. So we'll actually have another encoder. Now the output will be sent to the next layer. And then after N amount of layers, let's say six, we'll then send the output of that final layer into the decoder. Now the decoder, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to erase. There we go. The decoder also has N layers as well. So the output of one layer of the decoder forms the input to the next layer of the decoder, similar to what we were doing with the encoder that I just drew. After n amounts of layers, um, what we're going to do is we're going to run a linear projection over the hidden representations and a softmax, which will actually output a word. Now the decoder during inference is autoregressive. So what that means is that the output of one word will be used to create the input to the next uh, to the next time step of the decoder. So here we see output shifted right. We'll decode a word. Um, so let's say we were trying to decode now underpins almost all, and we've decoded now. What we're going to do then is try and predict the word underpins, and then we'll feed in now and the word that we've just generated. So now underpins, and we'll try to decode the word almost. 
Okay, let me just uh, change this back to a laser pointer. Okay, so if you didn't understand that, don't worry too much. Um, that's kind of the point of this tutorial series. We'll run through exactly what's going on, how it works, build some intuition for both uh, transformers and NLP in general. Um, but the context that we'll be working under here is translation, as I mentioned. So we'll have something which is known as a source sentence. Now, the source sentence is basically um, a sentence which is in the source language. So here we have a sentence in Hindi, Min Shatar Hun, which translates to I am a student. So generally speaking, in, in NLP, we have source, which is our input, and target, which is our output. So our target language is English, and our target sentence for this particular source sentence is I am a student. Now, let's just think of the transformer as a black box here, okay? We feed in some input and we decode an output. Now, as I mentioned, um, the transformer is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model or an encoder-decoder architecture. It has a stack of encoders and then a stack of decoders. So what we'll do is we'll take our natural language source sentence and we'll embed it. Now, if you've worked with NLP before, you might have come across word to vec or some other embedding, word embedding algorithms. What we'll be doing here is, uh, on top of whatever word embedding algorithm you decide to choose, we'll be applying something known as positional encoding. We'll dive into what this is. It's, it's not very clear unless you understand what's going on, how, how it actually works. Um, but basically, because transformers don't have an aspect of recurrence in there, we need some way to inject, um, inject the order of the sequence into the model. Don't worry too much about that. We'll dive into it when it becomes relevant. However, let's say we have our embedded sentence. We're going to use this embedded sentence and feed this through a stack of encoder layers. The final encoder layer will give us some kind of encoded representation of our source sentence, and we'll feed that into the decoder. The decoder will then auto-regressively decode a word, token by token, until we have a whole sentence. Okay, so as I mentioned a couple of times, the output of one layer is the input to the next layer. So here, let's just say this is uh, layer two, for example, layer two of our four layers in the encoder, doesn't, doesn't matter what it is, just more than, more than three layers, that's, that's all that's important for this particular diagram. So we have one encoder layer, the output of this encoder layer will be the input to the next encoder layer. Okay, and this encoder layer will give an output, which will be the input to the encoder layer after it. Now, in one encoder layer, there are two sublayers, which are uh, depicted by what's in between the white boxes. Okay, so this is one sublayer, and this is the other sublayer. Okay, now in the first sublayer, we have something known as multi head self attention, which is the core of how transformers actually work. So, we'll be spending some time on that. And then after the multi-head self-attention, we have something known as a residual layer normalization. And that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. But again, we'll be looking into that um, over the course of the, the next couple of videos. The output of this residual layer normalization gets sent to the second sublayer, which will have a position-wise feedforward network in it. This will also go through another residual layer normalization. And this will give us the output for one of our encoder layers. Then we'll use this output and feed it as input to the next encoder layer. Okay, that basically runs through an introduction of the transformers and what the encoder is like. What we'll do now is run through, or what we'll do in the next video, is run through how self-attention actually works and also look at multi-head attention as well. There we'll be looking at some code, so it won't just be theory. We'll actually get hands-on and dirty with, with, um, with, with some PyTorch. Okay, see you soon. Bye.